Ben Simmons speaking live for the first time since the trade in Brooklyn. Two things I want to say. Stephen A. Lisa Salters asked where is he mentally and physically. He said physically pretty good. Uh, mentally I'm getting there. I feel like I'm heading in the right direction. And about skeptics about his mental health. He said they should be happy I'm smiling because I've gone through some pretty dark times recently. What is your visceral reaction to all that you just heard? that he was ill-prepared for this press conference and he came across as an individual that simply was not telling the truth. And I don't say that with skepticism or skepticism or whatever, you know. I'm rooting for the brother. He's a spectacular player. You know I told you I voted for him for the Defensive Player of the Year. I think he automatically elevates Brooklyn uh, big time. And you know me, I'm Knicks first, New York always. Yeah. So the if Brooklyn wins, I'm very, very happy as long as, you know, Nick's ain't in the picture, but that's a different subject for another day. Ben Simmons had several holes in his discussion here. Number one, <clears throat> he said he wanted, he was having issues prior to his performance in the playoffs. Yes. Okay? So here's my point. Then why didn't you ask for time off instead of asking to be traded? You didn't have to ask to be traded. If it wasn't about the Sixers, if it wasn't about the organization, if it wasn't about the coach, if it wasn't about a Joel Embiid and your relationship or lack thereof with them, why did you ask to be traded then? That's number one. Number two, he's on the record here, and I wrote this down. He said mental health had nothing to do with anything. Well, aren't you making the case to the NBA and the Players Association that mental health was the reason that you needed this time off, but you should still get paid? Because if you have mental health issues, they can't confiscate your pay. So you didn't, you've, you've minimized your argument. You hurt your argument in that regard if you were still in pursuit for your money, which I've been told he is. And so when you look at it from that perspective, those are two major, major holes. Because you're saying it wasn't mental health issues. You just had personal issues. You also said it had nothing to do with the coach, the organization, the city, the fans, or an individual player, which we all assume would be Joel Embiid. Yet, you never asked for time off. You asked to be traded. So there's inconsistencies there. Well, someone asked, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Was there one event where he decided, I need to be out? And he said, multiple factors. Yes. It, it piled up. That was the term he it used. It piled it, up. It, it piled up, which again, is inconsistent with what you were trying to say. You said you didn't have a problem with the organization. You said you didn't have a problem with the fans. You said you didn't have a problem with the player. You said you didn't have a problem with the coach. Well, who the hell you got a problem with? And if you got personal issues that are going on with you, that's not necessarily a mental health issue, unless you said it was mental health. He said, no, it's not mental health. I just had some issues that I needed to deal with. That's inconsistent with the argument that's been disseminated out there. Now, he hasn't spoken, so we didn't hear from him until today. But these were what all the reports were saying. And so as a result of that, I'm looking at it from that perspective. Then I'm looking at the fact that the moment you get traded, yeah, y'all had a game in Miami on Saturday, but last night was your first game in Brooklyn since the trade, which happened just three days earlier, and you on the bench smiling up a storm. The world is beautiful, suddenly. Okay, these are all things that are inconsistent with a person that, according to the report, swore up and down they had mental health issues. And so as a result, these are the kind of things that people are going to look at. Now, in the end... Well, you, let's say one thing. Let's sure. just clean one thing sure, up. Sure. You can be dealing with mental health, and mm -hmm. you can be in a moment where you're also smiling. Okay, that's so true. So both can be true. That's true, and I'm not saying that we, it we, can't. Let's be fair What I'm there. saying is, what we've all been saying, people who, and I've gone on NBA Countdown, and I said this... Mm -hmm. Please understand, mental health issue is a very, very serious Absolutely. thing. And you don't just throw that out for mm -hmm. no reason, okay? If he's having those issues, we definitely are sensitive to it. The problem is half the people out there don't believe him. And so when you saw that last night, just a couple of days after you got traded to Brooklyn, you recognized the fact that it was all about getting traded all along. Remember, when they mentioned the mental health issues, the first time we had heard that was when they reported for training camp. We hadn't heard that all summer. Yeah. Now, his camp says he said that to the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, he said that in right? the press conference. He I'm, said they knew about it prior, right. the Sixers. And the Philadelphia 76ers have sworn, have sworn till the cows come home. They never heard a word about mental health issues until October. So somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. We don't know who it is. Yeah. We know who most people believe is lying. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it all comes down to this. In the end, you're a Brooklyn net. 
period. You got KD and Kyrie as your teammates, period. You're going to be out there. You're going to play ball. That's what it comes down to. But and again, but again, you're going to look at him with those in terms of this press yeah. conference. Wait. He was not prepared well enough for this press conference. We have a minute left. We'll do much more on this, obviously, tomorrow, and we'll hear from uh, Harden sure. live later. But he said, I think it's going to be scary, KD, Kyrie, beside me. The pace we want to play at, it's going to be unreal. Talk to me about on the court next 30 seconds. I think Brooklyn can win it all. I'm not definitively stating that. I've got to see it. Okay. But they can win it all. Ben Simmons himself, just Ben Simmons, without Seth Curry, without Andre Drummond, Ben Simmons can guard Giannis Antetokounmpo. He can guard a Jimmy Butler, a Tyler Hero, a Trey Young, and all of these guys. He could end up guarding James Harden mm. if they go against <laughs> Philly in the playoffs. Ben Simmons New is an rivalry. all-world defender. And pairing him with KD and Kyrie, that can win you a championship. We cannot rule it out. They are better, much better for this deal. Philly's better, but Brooklyn's more better. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.